Hi there and welcome to another episode of Plane Chasing. My name is James Menzies of James Menzies Productions. Today I have with me close personal friend Gerard Jabaley from South Carolina. Hi Gerard, how are you doing? Good afternoon, how are you? I'm good, thank you. So Gerard, tell me a little bit about where you're from, where you grew up. Uh, started in South Carolina, uh, been my home state for as long as I can remember until I came here to Oklahoma for school, which uh, is where I met you the first time yep, yep, back in uh, 2005, uh, many years ago, but okay. it doesn't feel like it's... Uh, it's really gone very uh, slowly. It feels like it was just yesterday, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, it does. But a lot of things have happened, of course, uh, between now and then uh, with, uh, I guess, how Chasers have started out and where we've gone to now. I've moved yeah. to Kansas City now where I'm working as a meteorologist for 41 Action News, which is a news station up there. So I uh, did do what many people would say, uh, crossed into the dark side, going into television. Mm -hmm. but. I, I have a plan for that, and that is to try to bridge the gap between storm chasers and the media, which a lot of times people could say they're, they're, they're at least butting heads at times the yeah. way they would do things. So I, I'm hoping that I can bring the knowledge, experience, and uh, what our ideals are as storm chasers, but into a world of media where we don't have to, uh, I guess, m push things to a limit that we would say is uncomfortable. Yeah. By that I mean we don't want to fake anything, right? Yeah. So um, I'm happy that I can at least bring real storm chasing to a news station that appreciates it, utilizes it in a very good way. Yeah, because I know back in uh, South Carolina it took you quite a while to convince the news station to let you chase for them because they weren't no. really use, using storm chasers out in South Carolina. Well, it's a brand new thing to them. Here yeah. in the plains of you know, the United States, the Central Plains, it's a common thing that we've had for a long time. But in some place like the coastal plains of South Carolina, it's brand new. They, most people have never even seen storm chasers. They only hear about the ones out here. And the question is, what on earth is there to chase in South Carolina? Yeah. Well, I brought something that we can uh, look at and we can talk about. Yeah, well, there's always hurricanes to chase. Without about. a doubt. That, that's <laughs> the interesting thing is we have not just tornado season, we have hurricane season too. Yeah. But uh, it it's definitely has its challenges. Uh, in, and the plains, of course, out here, uh, probably one of the bigger challenges we have now is just each other. Always bumping into uh, a lot of the uh, backups on the highways with people and, of course, all the chaser convergences. It's, it's for the most part, free for all in, in, in South Carolina and those areas, but you have to contend with a lot of trees. Um, the roads are not gridded, mm -hmm. so uh, difficult roads to, to be on, but most of the time you will have a really good storm all to yourself. Yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely a good thing. Mm -hmm. Now, when you were growing up, did you always want to be a storm chaser or did, was this something you grew into later in life as you were growing up? It's something I didn't even know existed until I was probably 10 or 12 years old and then the, the home videos start popping up all over the place and you see that and you're like, wow, these guys actually go out and, and find these storms and do that. So uh, it was something I was always fascinated about doing, but I was doing it and didn't even realize my first tornado I saw when uh, I was with my uh, parents. We were just in Colorado on vacation. I said, yeah. Dad, go that way. There's a storm over there. Let's go look at it. And he said, OK. <clears throat> we took our turn. And we had two beautiful funnels that just popped up out of it. I knew nothing about meteorology at the time. I just saw what was there, and it was really pretty. Um, didn't have to chase Hurricane Hugo. It came to my backyard. Yeah. Uh, so that was a, a very, very big awakening that happened when I was only six years old there. And uh, as uh, you know, the bug bites you and you get really fascinated about what weather is and mm. what storms are, then of course you're chasing them without even knowing you're chasing them. You're just saying, oh, there's a storm. Let's go look at it. Let's go check this out. But until I came here to OU, I didn't really have a vehicle that I would say was properly set up for what we do here. Yeah. So I took it from there. Um, we, you know, had our experiences here. And then I brought that basically the experience, the equipment, the know how, the knowledge, uh, after, you know, of course, learning a lot about meteorology first. And I was able to do it successfully uh, just on my own in South Carolina, but also in a way that I guess uh, some of the news stations out there found very valuable. Yeah. So would you say the storm you saw in Colorado, was that kind of your first tornado? Oh, without a doubt. Um, those were the first, and again, I was five years old at the time, but I, I just, I begged my parents, hey, go that way, big dark cloud. But, um, you know, after that first hurricane that I recall was, was, was Hugo. And then other 
weather events that just happened when you're a kid that you might recall. Yeah. Being in the Florida Keys and we were out fishing and oh, this is something I'll never forget. I wish I had a camera at, yeah. with us at the time, but you know, big line of storms came at us. I kid you not, and anyone who might have seen this happen before will, will know that it can happen. We had six water spouts touch down all in a row along this uh, storm front that was just moving in. It was, a, it was just amazing, blew my mind. We were just trying to get out of the way on the way back to shore as quickly as we could, but there are probably just about a quarter of a mile away from us, each one as it touched down. Wow. So amazing stuff can happen when you're younger to feed your hunger for, yeah. for doing such a thing. Yeah, absolutely. Now, um, what would you say has been the, like, the highlight of your career so far? I, I can't take a specific, uh, I, I guess I would say day, but I would say one of the days that are, or, or the chases that I'd say is still the most <clears throat> memorable is the one that you were with me on. Uh, the day before and after, uh, or I should say the day of Greensburg being hit and the day after. Yeah. So that was uh, certainly very memorable times because we had a double header that day mm -hmm. and uh, we were out for a long period of time and of course we had some very interesting things happen on that trip, yes. <laughs> which uh, we probably won't get into, but let's just say this, you and I, we, uh, we came pretty close that night to some pretty big tornadoes yep. unintentionally. Yeah, we were and, very uh, lucky. Uh -huh. So those are stories that I'll carry with me for the rest of my life and I know that you won't forget either. Yeah, they're definitely going down in my book I'm writing, mm -hmm. so. But uh, yeah, that was definitely uh, one experience I would like not to get into again. <laughs> I don't think either of us wanted to once, but now that we've had it, we probably chase a little bit differently now. Yeah, right? I'm also very surprised none of us caught malaria from that trip with the amount of mosquitoes You're that were right. attacking us. The mosquito nados <laughs> before the tornadoes yeah. were interesting, weren't they? Yeah, but uh, yeah, that was definitely uh, uh, an amazing, uh, experience as well mm. you know and also seeing Greensburg afterwards that amount of destruction was just something I will never forget and it still chokes me up every time I go back there to visit and uh, I don't know if you've been back there recently but it's amazing how much that town has changed and I actually covered. have not been back since yeah. it's, it, it shook me up in a, in, a, in a way that I guess anyone who goes there after the fact but you know, a lot of things I wasn't prepared for because I've mm -hmm. never been in a situation that was that amount of destruction. Yeah. And of course, we were walking around in it that day, but yeah. uh, it was just incredible, not just the sights, but maybe you might remember the smells. Yeah. I'll never forget the smells of the gasoline and diesel mixed with raw sewage, the splintered wood and sap from the trees. Yeah. You mix that with what you're seeing, and I was sick to my stomach the whole day. It just really yeah. shook me up. and. And it's it's terrifying to be there way yeah. after the fact. So I don't yeah. even, I can't imagine what it would be like during. Yeah. Um, have you uh, ever come across a situation where you think maybe you could have chosen a different career, like never. or maybe not being a meteorologist <laughs> and gone a different route? Uh, never in my life. It's it's been something that has been. You know, when we, when we say passion, we're kind of underdoing that term a little bit. We're, yeah. we're obsessed a little bit in a way. Um, not just with storms, but weather in general. Right. Um, like I said, from a very young age, the first picture, one of the first pictures I ever brought home to my mom from when I was three years old, I should have brought that. Me scribbling with crayon on a tornado. I knew what it looked like because I had yeah. looked in National Geographic pictures before. But I was fascinated. And when the bug bites you, everyone knows it doesn't let go. You've got it with you the rest of your life. And I knew as long as I had the ability to chase uh, at least a dream of being a meteorologist, I was going to do it. I was going to try as, as hard as I could until I uh, either I couldn't do it anymore one mm -hmm. way or the other. Now, out of uh, all the years you've been storm chasing, I know it's been quite a lot, what's been your favorite state to chase in, do you think? Just for, in terms of scenery, accessibility? Mm. <clears throat> uh, I have to say, and many people may not like this, but I like Kansas, uh, specifically Southwest Kansas. Yes, it's very empty. You're but not it's the flat. first to say that. Oh, okay. You're well, that's the good. First to say that. Southwest Kansas is—it's just pure perfection as far as chase country, as far as, as I've seen. Mm. Um, it's you know very very flat. Uh, the roads are still pretty decent. Um, fairly accessible to a lot of other uh, locations. So if you needed to cross around and get to the next place, you know, if you needed to drop south down to Amarillo, it's yeah, a there's quick a great shot. grid network of roads. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's just because I've gotten so lucky there. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Texas Panhandle would be a close second. Yeah, 
Now, have you ever been chasing in the Northern Plains? Have you ever Nebraska. Nebraska? I haven't made it as far as the Dakotas yet, but I'm sure that's going to be on, on the list. But uh, we all want to avoid those headaches of no roads and lots of trees or huge hills and certainly any urban areas. So that's another reason why Southwest Kansas fits the bill. It doesn't have any of those. Yeah. So uh, which station is it that you actually work for now? Uh, 41 Action News, which is the NBC affiliate up there in Kansas City. And some people may have heard the chief meteorologist's name is Gary Lezak. He used to be here in Oklahoma City working along Gary, Le uh, Gary Lezak, Gary England. <laughs> yeah. uh, several years ago, he was kind of his protege. So uh, I get a little bit of Gary England from time to time when my chief talks because yeah. one meteorologist carries some of the habits and the, and the, the, the traits, way they do yeah. things, the traits of their former... Uh, bosses or mentors so uh, it's kind of interesting how I still stayed connected here through him yeah you miss Oklahoma oh without a doubt I mean I come here just for this and I'm I wish I could stay for a lot longer but uh, it's nice that at least I found a career in a wonderful position where I'm at now which I really enjoy but in a place that's close enough where I can come down if I wanted to on a couple of days off if I wanted to to still go back and remember the old OU times yeah so, Gerard, you also, as well as being a meteorologist, do you have any uh, hobbies that you like to do when you're not working? If I was closer to the ocean, unfortunately, I would have all those with it. I love to be anywhere near uh, the ocean, beyond South Carolina. That's where I grew mm -hmm. up. So fishing was something we did, offshore deep sea fishing, just about every weekend there. Uh, so I love to fish. Freshwater, saltwater doesn't bother me. I love doing that. Uh, played the trumpet in the Pride, so I do like some music every now and then. Uh, anything outdoors. I, I love the outdoors in any way, shape, or form. So one more thing to just feed the, uh, the habit of being outside for storms or even on nice days. Find me something to do. I can enjoy weather, good, bad, or ugly. Yeah. That's out of interest. Where do you see yourself in, uh, let's say, 10 years from now? Do you see yourself still being a meteorologist or do you think you might change to permanent storm chaser or what? Well, unfortunately, as you and I both know, being a professional storm chaser and being able to eat at the same time is a difficult thing. Yes, it is. <laughs> you, uh, nowadays, it's difficult to uh, just be a permanent storm chaser. Mm -hmm. And many people might be out there trying that, but you know, things have really changed in the past uh, several years because before it was always us that was able to provide the video to the various networks or wherever it was going to go. Now we've got that mixed in with everybody having a smartphone with a camera. Mm -hmm. So anytime we have an outbreak, we're going to get uh, some video from us, but a lot of video just from whoever was outside the that general day. general public. Yeah. That was there. So uh, unfortunately that's gone downhill. So I would probably say that is very, very uh, low likelihood of me being mm -hmm. able to continue that in any sort of professional way. Mm -hmm. Luckily, uh, as I've been in the media, part of it is, yeah, I do the daily uh, on-air broadcast from in-studio, but anytime yeah. there's anything weather-related outside that's even remotely threatening, they love when I can go out and do the uh, storm-chasing thing for them and provide a service for them as well, too. So that's going to continue for some amount of time. Yeah. After that, I don't know. It depends on where the career would take me. I always see myself as being a meteorologist of some sort, whether I stay in the media or if I go to a private sector or something like that. That's still a, a possibility, but yeah. for right now, I know I'll probably stay on the course and I'm on here for the next three to five years. Yeah. Now, being a meteorologist on TV, you could, uh, you could actually help a lot of us chasers by doing this. Uh, when the public send in videos, make sure you refuse the ones that are shot vertically <laughs> and not horizontally. Oh, such a big headache, and I, I twitch. And, and luckily, even as a person who's not a storm chaser, every time we get one of those and we see it, we're like, oh, come on, it would, would have been a great video. So yes, I'm always begging people, send me videos, please turn your phone sideways. So yeah, that's one of them. But the other thing is, is that I, I've been a really good filter because as storm chasers, we, we're really used to seeing what storms are supposed to look like. So we're yeah. good at weeding out fakes. And that is a big thing lately. A lot of people are putting in- They're posting old videos yes, and sharing old videos. Or fake things past. and they're sending them into us. And mm -hmm. a producer, may not know the difference, but as soon as one of the meteorologists, especially ones that have been out there and seen videos that we yeah. have, uh, we can tell the difference pretty quick or we recognize whose video it is and uh, we'll give them a call as soon as that happens. Yeah, that seems to be a, a very common thing now, videos getting stolen and mm -hmm. uh, used by people that, uh, that they don't belong to. Mm -hmm. That's uh, unfortunate. Okay, so Gerard, we've got a video here mm -hmm. that you're showing us and uh, this was shot in Darlington, South Carolina. 
Um, and uh, can you just tell us exactly what this video mm -hmm. is about and where, uh, where, you know, what day it was? Sure. April 25th, uh, 2010. Uh, outside of Darlington, this is just off the west or southwest side of Darlington, near a tiny little community called Oats. I fell asleep that afternoon, and what <laughs> always happens when a storm chaser goes and takes a little nap, you get explosive uh, development that happens. That's exactly what, what occurred. Luckily, I woke up, had a quick peek at the radar, and this lovely storm had fired off. Again, this is about 10 miles away from my home, uh, which is in Florence. So Darling, you've been to, you've yep. been to, and it's not far away. So this was a backyard chase. Amazing that this storm popped up. Did not have a severe thunderstorm warning on it yet, but it was already very clear to me how uh, impressive it was. You already saw the developing wall cloud under it, and right there at this point, they just now issued a severe thunderstorm warning, which uh, I was very glad to hear because I knew it ne at least needed that given the structure of it. Already you can see it, it has that wall cloud that has some rotation on there. Yep. Uh, I get closer now. One thing I want to it's draw fairly, everyone. Fairly elevated oh, wall yeah. cloud at this point as well. Exactly. But I want to make sure everyone realizes that this is, this is considered rural South Carolina. You saw how many homes were around there. Yeah. And that's the way it is out there. There are a lot of homes spaced out all over the place. You don't just have those tiny clusters of homes. Yeah. Um, they're, they're spread out. So that's another thing that grabs my attention, the fact that this could be a very dangerous storm for a lot of people. So here we are, and uh, we're parked. I'm by myself, by the way. I've been in contact with another storm chaser. Believe it or not, he was uh, out of Shaw Air Force Base in Sumter. Uh, he's just there uh, as, a, as a meteorologist, and he, he came out that day. I, I met him several times, and we were both following this storm in separate vehicles. Yeah. And I got right under this and you can see the rotation associated with it. And I gave my uh, first call to the National Weather Service in Wilmington to let them know what I was seeing. All the classic structure that you would see in a plane storm. Yeah. I mean, we got the clear slot, we've got that rapidly rotating wall cloud, you can see the RFD clearly descending. Yeah, descending. you can see the sinking in the RFD in the back uh -huh. And when it really started getting its act together, I, I obviously got worried, but you know, I always try to, think in the back of my mind, this is South Carolina. A lot of people wouldn't expect to see something like this in yeah. South Carolina. But and this is sped up here. Time yes, two, two times time, speed, yeah. uh, just to kind of speed things along here, no pun intended, but uh, just to also give a, a, an idea of the motion. Yeah. But it did not take long from this point before we're going to get ready. This thing's about to spin its first tornado segment, at least we know for a fact. So great structure on this storm. It was surprising with, with everything. I was just shocked. It's a slight risk day and I'm seeing this beautiful LP supercell right out my backyard practically. Yeah. This is still sped up video mm -hmm. as well. But so which road were you on at this point? Which way were you looking? Uh, believe it or not, this road, if you were to continue this all the way east, it would end up right outside my neighborhood. But the name changes. This is The name of the road is called East 7 Pine Street, but it's uh, the main road that, that basically takes you into Florence, my hometown. And I, you know, followed the storm in. The, again, the rotation, is, of course, really caught my eye, and I just said to myself, this is going to put out a tornado at any second. I just knew it. And sometimes you just have that gut feeling when you see yeah, it. Yeah, a lot of times, you know, especially experienced chasers, if you've been mm -hmm. doing it for a long time, mm -hmm. you can usually tell when a storm's going to produce. Right. And at this because point... Because just the rotation yeah. alone can give you that indication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was doing a chase purely visual here. I wasn't looking at radar at all. And, and here we are. There's the, the funnel descending the first touchdown that we are able to see, at least with this particular tornado. Yeah. Um, right here, it's about a half a mile in front of me, just on the other side of the trees. I wanted to get a good idea of the speed and motion before I really uh, moved forward a whole lot more. But also, I was on the phone with the Weather Service, finally giving them a phone call. This is the second phone call at this point in time. Uh, now reporting, of course, a tornado on the ground. They didn't issue a tornado warning based upon the rapid rotation that I gave them initially. I think they, uh, they would after I told them exactly what I was seeing. I stayed on the phone with them for the next, oh, four to five minutes to kind of give them a speed bearing, that sort of thing. And uh, again, another problem in the South Carolina is you do have those periods of trees that can get in your way. But as soon as it clears, this is when we'll start to see things really get interesting. Yeah. Here. So now you can see the circulation on the ground, debris being flown up in the air. Now, I know it hit a number of structures, um, so at this point it was doing damage. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, its first touchdown was right about where I'm at here. And these two vehicles were coming out of their locations very rapidly. I'm pretty sure they must have seen some sort of impact to, to try to drive so aggressively. So I was pretty sure that those two vehicles, for some reason, were a little startled by what happened. And they were trying to either escape or something. But I was continuing to follow this. It really uh, stayed, as far as the condensation funnel, you can see it, it, it didn't really reach the ground all the way. It, it basically stayed elevated most of the time, but yeah. the ground circulation stayed very visible the entire point. And yeah, there, you see now it's starting to gain strength, you can tell. Mm -hmm. You can see uh, quite a few sub vortices mm -hmm. there at ground level. Mm -hmm. And um, still, as, as it's continuing its track, it, it's moving fairly slowly, around 30, 35 miles per hour, and uh, as I follow it, I'm just kind of staying on the phone, staying back, but the biggest problem I had was the weather service not understanding where I was. I know I said my location two or three times. They were in shock themselves that this was happening. This storm was occurring in between two radar sites, almost, yeah. almost perfectly, so they couldn't see the rotation that clearly on radar. So I'm giving them a report. This is on a Sunday. They had kind of a skeleton newbie crew who didn't really know who I was because I was familiar in the area with, and the weather service guys are a normal staff. They knew who I was. But, um, you know, this was surprising to them. And at this point, the tornado has been on the ground already around three to four minutes, I think. Yep. And they, the warning still hasn't come out yet. So you'll notice some damage on the right here yep. uh, just to these grove of trees. It snapped them very cleanly as it tends to with those uh, long, skinny pine trees out there. Again, another thing that just makes you a little scared when you drive by and there's just a mess of small trailers or mobile homes. Yeah. Of course, it just takes a Which small tornado. Which are very tornado. common out there. As very well. common. Yeah. But this is the kind of road you're on and that, that just worries you when you see that kind of, those kind of buildings on this road. So now is when things get really interesting. You'll see this vortex pop up right in front right down the road for me here. Yeah, and this is still one of my most favorite tornado videos ever that I've ever seen because it's so unique and it's something you don't see very often. Mm -hmm. And I got real lucky. Here it is. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, my God. Wow. Oh, that was just fantastic. Holy Unbelievable. The, sh the shape of that little vortice, I, I call it the bullwhip because it kind of resembles maybe a cowboy wh whipping a, a yeah, bullet yeah. over his head. Well, the lasso, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, just that single crack as it, as it looks just like that. And so. that's what makes this video so unique is because I, to this day, since you filmed that, mm -hmm. have never seen any footage of anything whipping round like that. There have been several multiple vortex tornadoes where you get some that like it, and I've seen them curl and get into that helix shape. Yeah. But uh, a single one like that was, was very interesting yeah. to me, and it really blew my mind again, too. But that, that also revealed the intensity when you yeah. see it really wrapping up like that at ground level. Because as you know, when you see the funnel, it looks like it's kind of spinning fairly slowly, but when you get to the ground circulation, yep. wow, it can be far more intense than you really thought. Yeah, and that's something I like to, to state to people that are new to storm chasing mm -hmm. is that just because it may not look very strong from the funnel mm -hmm. doesn't mean that it's not right. a lot more violent right. at ground level. Exactly. So that's where you've got to be very careful when, exactly. you're, when you're storm chasing. So at this point, the tornado warning was finally issued after that first segment lifted. You can see the debris on the ground. I was actually blocked off uh, from traveling any further by a tree in the road. So at this point, uh, the chase is over. For the time being, I couldn't tell if the circulation had lifted, but I went back because I saw this. Just as I passed by, I saw this home that was completely obliterated. Yeah, I could see a horse trailer upside uh -huh. down there in the field. Someone was flagging me down, waving me down. So The people I, from the house were yes, flagging me down? Yes, and there he is, uh, standing out there, flagging me down. They are obviously just been hit. Wow. And I was terrified to find out what I was, what I was going to see. Now, were they actually in the property when it happened? Yes, they were inside wow. the home. I, I rushed up. First thing I needed to know, was anyone hurt? They were too shocked. I can tell just by <laughs> his, his body language, he's, he's mm -hmm. in shock there, yeah. And of course, the, the house here at this point is upside down. Yes, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was really uh, So it was a single-story house on a, on a slab. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it was elevated. It wasn't on a slab. It oh, was it's actually, elevated. Yeah. It was actually elevated. Uh -huh. okay. It was on uh, the foundation was, was lifted up a, a bit. You can make out a, a Ford F-250 pickup truck underneath the house that got blown away with that. Yeah. 
But these people right now, again, they're just totally in shock as to what happened. They're asking, where is it going? Is it coming back? You know, they're, they're scared. I, one thing I can assure them, no, it's gone. It's going away. Who's hurt? I run back to my vehicle. Uh, some neighbors already started, you know, flocking over to see what was happening. And um, I said, hey, can you go help them? I'm going to call for some help. Yeah. So some people were able to help these folks down. One guy was just in his bed taking a nap. The other were just hanging out watching the TV. It's a sleepy Sunday afternoon, things that you would expect. They had no idea it was coming until they heard it. They said maybe 10, 15 seconds they had time to get to the hallway. Yeah. So they survived this in a hallway, uh, elevated off the ground as most homes like that uh, in this area typically are. And that can be quite, you know, um, beneficial um, to a tornado for actually being able to get the wind under the house to oh, yeah. lift it. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's, you know, that's probably why it was flipped on its mm -hmm. roof like that. Whereas if it had been a concrete foundation, it may have not been flipped over as much. Might not have been. That's a good question for Tim Marshall. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Ask absolutely. Ask him what, what yeah. he would say about that. But it being elevated yeah. just a bit, uh, certainly could have gotten the wind under it, which lifted the whole thing up, Wizard yeah. of Oz style, and just flipped it up upright. Yeah. So um, an interesting day, without a doubt. Scary day, without a doubt. Yeah. Thank God no one was seriously injured with that. There's two more segments of that tornado, actually, which... Um, We'll talk about in just a second. But with that first segment, that was the most intense. Yeah. Uh, well, luckily, no fatalities. No fatalities. Yeah. Not even those people that escaped with their lives right there. Mm -hmm. Cuts and bruises. That yeah. was it. And that was just being in the hallway of was I wouldn't say the most the best built home no. to survive a tornado, and that's for sure. But uh, that particular segment of the tornado is rated uh, strong EF2, 135 mile per hour winds. Of course, just a hair above 136 becomes an EF3. Uh, there were two more segments. One made its way into Darlington, ripped the uh, roof off of an elementary school. Again, thank goodness it was a Sunday, so yeah. no one was there. And the third personal <laughs> attachment to uh, missed my mom's house just outside of Darlington by 80 yards. I was cleaning up tree debris out of her uh, driveway <laughs> from that same tornado uh, that summer. So. Wow, yeah. in my backyard and ended up in my mom's backyard practically. Yeah, so that'd be one of your more memorable days for sure. Oh, without a doubt. And uh, since then, they've actually had another tornado touch down in that exact same area. This was, uh, it was either one to two years ago. I want to say it was two years ago. Yeah. So as you can see, this is not an area that's completely devoid of such storms, but it still surprises these folks because when we're seeing tornado videos and storm chasers, we're only seeing them from here. So this is a little bit of a unique perspective to get it from the coastal plains of South Carolina instead of the Great Plains of Oklahoma, Kansas, Texas. And here, this sort of terrain as well in South Carolina, well, I could say more central and western mm -hmm. South Carolina, is very much Dixie Alley. It's mm -hmm. very much that type of terrain, Alabama, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And as you know, they get violent tornadoes do. down there as well. And we're actually in that mm -hmm. kind of season for that mm -hmm. down there. They are. Dixie Alley is, certainly has that. Dixie Alley has more hills. This part of South Carolina, it's flat as a pancake. You wouldn't know it just because there's so many trees around. Yeah. The only time there's any sort of a change in elevation is when you dip down into a creek bed of some sort. Yeah. But it is as flat as can be out there. So that's the one good thing, I guess, from a chasing perspective is you're, you don't have to deal with hills, but you'd have to deal with trees. Yeah. Well, Gerard, that's a brilliant video. And uh, thank you Thanks. very much for taking the time to drive down from Kansas City mm -hmm. to come and visit with me and uh, talk. Absolutely, thank show. you. And uh, wish you lots of luck for this coming season. And uh, good luck on air. Thank you. I can use uh, every bit of that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a very challenging job. Um, uh, I w would always invite any storm chaser to try to come out and try the green wall once. And I know from when I was before I was even on air, we all can watch the guys on TV and we probably say, ah, I could have said that better. I could have done that better. It's, it's a difficult job. So uh, I'm glad that I have both sets of shoes and maybe uh, I can kind of understand what it's like and maybe like i said bridge the gap and, and combine these two one's a hobby i guess you could say but at mm. least combine the hobby with the profession of being a meteorologist in a way that's beneficial but also i can kind of uh, share the two together well that's good because you get to, you get to experience it from behind the camera and in mm -hmm. front of the camera mm -hmm. so yeah and that's something not many people can do mm -hmm. and yeah, it is a very challenging job, and uh, I know there's a lot of pressure involved, especially Ooh, during yeah. a severe weather event. Oh, yeah. Because uh, you've got to definitely keep on your toes with mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, 
you know, I'm, uh, as, a, as a friend who's known you for so long, I'm proud, proud of you. Thank you, man. And I uh, how far you've come since I first met you. Long way, right? Yeah, very long way, yeah. <laughs> Didn't think I was even going to get halfway there. But yeah, it's absolutely. Surprising where, where, you know, things like this can take you. I never thought for a second I was yeah. going to go into the media. But when I went in, I went in with the thought that I can make this better. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make it different. I mean, at least want to try to change the perception of things. The same yeah. way a storm chaser might exist to try to, I know you exist, with the idea that we're we don't want the perception of all of us to just be those wacky, crazy guys that are out there just trying to get ourselves and others killed. We're trying to do something valuable, mm. but it's different for each person. I understand that, whether it's a personal value to you or value to the community. That's, yeah. that's your own decision to make. But um, we're still doing this as mostly a hobby, whether we want to admit that or not. Mm. Yeah. All right, well, Gerard, thanks a lot. I appreciate it, and uh, have a safe trip back to Kansas City. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining me for this episode of Plane Chasing. Be sure to tune in for the next episode. Thanks.